yeah. Yeah. or whatever their explanation about love is God and God is love has to do nothing with the reality because it is the same crazy mind that is explaining. So yes, if we take up that question, and it's a good question, but uh, we have to ask in a different way. What is that different way? You have a plastic card that is a limit of $20,000. You are walking in a mall. There are hundreds of stores. And you have a couple of desires in the mind going to the store. You use the card and you can buy all the stuff return home. Because you have resources. That's why you bought lot of stuff in return home. If you have the inner resources that makes you a seeker, that will help you to find if the God is love or love is yeah. But if I miss those resources, nothing will happen. Then the same crazy mind is going to explain uh, one who believes in Jesus will say, I am right. One who doesn't believe in Jesus will say that you are crazy. That is where the Eastern wisdom comes. Compare the two. Outer resources. Outer resources are meant for objective solution, or you can simply say the outer resources are meant for solutions of the challenges we face in the world. I feel hungry. Outer resources is food. I feel thirsty. Water is outside there. I feel cold. Clothes are there. I want to I want to protect my body. Home is the outer resource. Outer resources are known as the objective solutions. Objective solution, you cannot find any objective solution of subjective problem. What are the subjective problems? Fear, frustration, jealousy, hatred, dissatisfaction, unhappiness. You, you cannot say that here lies the unhappiness. Let me throw it. Let me throw the mouse. Let me, let me get rid of this house. Uh, unhappiness lies there. They are subjective problems. Yeah. So unless we find the inner resources first to approach what is inside me, I cannot find love. Neither nor I can find God. <clears throat> ah, that would be a wonderful, yes, I remind myself of something, I will talk about this. But before that, I must uh, uh, give you a brief that these monks who lived almost 6,000 years, 5,000 years ago, even couple of the masters lived for 3,000, 1,000 years ago. There was another master who lived 200 years ago who wrote a text about his experiences who says that why should not I find the God in me? Mm -hmm. Ah, it's such a wonderful book. 
it contains the the name of the book you will be surprised the name of the book is vichar sagar if i translate that book into english language the title it means the ocean of thought ocean of wisdom so what are the waves the waves are the chapters there are seven chapters so what are the topics the topics are ripples so he uh, from the five principles he expanded the five principles into 538 topics and that contains all the problems he raised the problem and then he says here is a solution and ultimately he says love is god god is love or love is or god is knowledge god is pure consciousness and that consciousness is lies within me but in the very beginning he explains about the inner resources so now i'm going back to another teacher who contemplated long back 3000 years ago so he he wrote five point program five point program kak chesta bako dhyanam shwan nidra tathai vicha alpahari grah tyagi vidyarthi panch lakshanam he says there are five characteristics of a seeker who can realize and this master contemplated because he was contemplating and reflecting in the forest so in the forest he always he met those animals and the birds so the verse that i spoke it contains three birds three animals two birds one animal now let us pick up the first he says kak chesta he says who is a seeker who makes an effort like a crow look at their observation that is what we are trying to understand in this in today's talk then he says second kak chesta bako dhyanam the the focus like a crane crane bird then he says the sleep like a dog three three qualities and the fourth one alpahari one takes the major diet refrains overeating or you filter the food and the thought you filter the junk food and the thought the fifth one that you discern between what is right and what is the false thinking process you are a seeker so when you are a seeker you can find love is god god is love but before that don't talk about it. so you see that you know lot of people if you ask it why you say that love is god god no i read it i heard it yeah okay. no it will not work so now pick up the one first it says the effort like a crow <laughs> i think you might have heard about the story of a crow uh, there was a pot in the water he saw the water crow saw the water at a lower level he put the pebbles one after the others and ultimately the level of the water rose up and he drank the water so now see it is only one verse what he wants to say he explained and then there is another interpretation by another master about this verse moment we have anxiety and a fear 
Are we ready to make an effort? Are we ready to make an effort in the right direction? <clears throat> Are we putting the pebble of right knowledge into the mind? Or we keep on thinking about anxiety and the fear? We increase our anxiety. Do we say that we are not worthy of suffering? <laughs> we are carried away by that fear. We get obsessed with it. We are possessed. We become the fear. We are not a seeker. We are too far from being a seeker. Now I put the pebble of right knowledge. No, I'm not worthy of suffering. Fear from where you have come. Can I calmly contemplate and reflect? There is always a fear of known. There is no fear of known. There is always a fear of unknown. If the fear comes from the unknown, why should I be scared? So when I start thinking like this, I put the right pebble to help the water of calmness to rise. I don't do it. If I do it, I am the highest seeker. <laughs> Look at the, when I read uh, these verses and I say, my ma these masters were the craziest. They give you the direct message. Contemplate and reflect. Am I worthy of suffering? Fear causes me the suffering. I am not worthy of suffering. Why? Because since birth until today I have been seeking peace and happiness. It means peace and happiness are my essential nature. I don't think, I don't think in that way. I get possessed and obsessed with the fear and I become the fear. The mind becomes the fear. The mind continues to suffer. I am too far from becoming a seeker. There is no way I get out of it because that is instinctive, impulsive and habitual pattern of the mind. It is causes the emotional bondage. Emotional bondage is just opposite the emotional quotient you have heard. You go and study modern science, emotional quotient. You claim that you have understood, but still nothing happened. Now see the explanation, our master's explanation. How simple it is. Emotion of fear is emotional bondage. Why the emotional bondage? Because of instinctive, impulsive and habitual nature of the mind. Why there is an emotional uh, instinctive, habitual nature of the mind, it comes by default. Why it comes by default? Because of ignorance. What is that ignorance? Ignorance says that you are, ignorance in the mind claims that you are worthy of suffering, but fact is that you are not worthy of suffering. But why you are not worthy of suffering? Answer is simple. I have been seeking peace. Have you ever sought? Let me be scared. Let me be in stress. Have you ever desired mm -hmm. stress in your life, fear in your life, duality in your life, hatred in your No. It proves I am not worthy of suffering. I am not <coughs> worthy of moving into peace and happiness. When I am not worthy of suffering, I claim it, I declare it, and I say there is no fear of the unknown, because I don't know why should I be scared. Fear is gone. I calm down. If you contemplate and reflect in that way, you are the highest level of a seeker, the first resources. Maybe. You have thought that you are not worthy of suffering. And then the contemplation stops because the pressure of the fear is more. 
and then you start the practice. You do the practice and you calm down. You are the medium seeker, mediocre, intermediate. <laughs> because with knowledge did not result into fearlessness, so you do the practice. So your thoughts and your feeling and calms down, ultimately you come out with a state of the calmness. You are an intermediate seeker. But you keep on following the fear. Yesterday I had, I was scared, you know, I was crazy. What happened today? No, there is no fear now, but still I have those impressions. You are the lowest level of the seeker. You have to continue to listen to the teacher, contemplate and reflect and do the practice to become the highest level of a seeker to get rid of it. You know, these verses in uh, Sanskrit are zip folder. They they contemplate and reflect not only one day, but they reflected for weeks and months together. They said these 50 principles can be summarized in a cryptid form, and that is what then the master might have thought. I, I visualize, and you can very well imagine, he said, Kakachista, the first phrase of the first line, Kakachista, that is the explanation. That is why you need a teacher to explain you. Otherwise, Kakachista, cruise effort, what a big deal. No, it's not a big deal. I have to relate it to myself. Now come to the Bako Dhyanam. Bako. Bak means uh, crane. Bako Dhyanam, focus like a, like a, like a crane. So first go to the crane, how they focus. So perhaps I can visualize that the, he might have seen the crane in a river who stands on one foot watching when the fish will pass through and I will catch the fish. Similarly, your mind is watching when the peace will come reveal itself from within and mind will be merged with the peace. <laughs> Look at the beauty. Ah, when I start, you know, talking about it, I, I feel, oh, what a great wisdom they had. Crane, focus like a crane. No, no, but when I am, when I am scared, when I have a fear within my mind, ask your mind to focus on the peace. Fear, peace. Fear, peace. Fear, peace. You never leave the effort. You return your focus to the peace, inner peace. You are the highest level of a seeker. I'm just explaining briefly. Yeah. It goes into hundreds of pages. So whenever I have anxiety, duality, conflict, and the mind invokes I'm not worthy of suffering, internally you contemplate. Your dad says you are crazy. Thank you, dad. I am more crazy than you think. You are uh -huh. the highest level of a seeker. You don't get, you are not affected by it. Why? You are not worthy of suffering. Why? No one outside can cause you any stress and suffering. I am responsible for my own stress. I am responsible for my own suffering. But if you do not contemplate that it's not a good idea that I am crazy, I am not. You misunderstand. And the fight starts. Conflict never comes to an end. Why? I lost focus. One. Second, for example, your dad says that you are crazy. 
the word crazy does not create any problem it is how my mind interprets the word crazy the interpretation takes place in my mind the word crazy remains outside are you getting it yeah, yeah. Oh, you're looking smart. So even the way I say you are looking smart, if it is sarcastic, then your mind gives a wrong interpretation. Stop this nonsense. So it is the mental interpretation. And when the mind is habitual, instinctive, it is, it is living in emotional bondage, it always creates a wrong interpretation of the world outside, people outside, relationship outside. I lose my focus. Master say, Bakodhyanam. Focus like a crane. Crane never feels tired. We blame that I'm tired. How long I will listen to you until you realize? <laughs> <laughs> that is your effort, that is your focus. Yeah. <clears throat> I asked my master, how long I have to listen to you? Um, he said, one million talks. So my master, he was very intuitive. He used to read the thoughts and I, my mind instantly said, this guy seems to be crazy. So you are telling me crazy. You are crazy. <laughs> why you are crazy? He explained that why you ask this question. You ask this question because you want a result instantly. You are not focused. You are not ready to make an effort. Hence, you are crazy. And I realized that. But it took place after a couple of years. But for three years he tolerated me. The teachers in the Eastern Wisdom, I'm using the word tolerating, but they are, not, they are free. Why they are free? From the guru or teachers of the Eastern Wisdom, from their point of view, you are real self. From the student's point of view, they say that I'm not real self. That's why you are approaching the master. Because you are real self, I'm also real self, so there is no problem. So from the point of view, of, from the standpoint of relationship of the teacher to the student, teachers in the Eastern wisdom always say that you are real self. You are peace and happiness. You are love and wisdom. So you raise a question, I am not. And that is what the teacher solves. From the teacher's point of view, in Eastern wisdom, we both are essentially one. From a student point of view, you are not one. So it takes your mind through the knowledge, through the understanding, through giving your examples, to parables, that we both are one. You are not worthy of suffering. You are peace. You are love. What do you mean? You are love? Well, the Bible says love is God. So you are love? Yes. Are you God? Yes. What is that? Pure consciousness. <laughs> Done. Problem is solved. But I have to realize that. I have to live that experience. Come to the third one. Shwan in idra tathayucha. So we have to sleep like a dog. So it, it, it's, in a, it's, a, it's in the form of a parable. I should not sleep. By keeping the mind habitual, instinctive, and emotionally dependent. That is the meaning. Why? 
Dad said you are crazy. Thank you, Dad. I am more crazy than you think. You are right. You are perfectly right. That is the meaning. Swan in Idrata Tevcha. So I don't sleep means I don't live my life unconsciously, habitually, instinctively. If I live my life habitually, instinctively, I will instantly react. I will fight. I will crave. I get possessed and obsessed. Today in the morning, this Indian guy who told me, Sir, you told me, but still, I invested half a million Indian rupees to a friend who, who told me that, you know, I will spend that in a shares and I will give you a return of 6 or 7 or 8 percent, whatever it is. So he gave me the return for 6 months, but after that I said, I know, now he's not ready to return your money. He has a loss in his shares. So you should bear the loss. But no, he told me, why did you agree? If he told you in the very beginning, why you agreed? Because your mind was instinctive, impulsive to get more pleasure. So you <coughs> thought he's a good friend of yours. And you, it's, a, it's a good to give him the money. Why you give him the money? Because I will get the return. Why did not you think in the very first time? Why you are blaming him? That is the meaning you were sleeping. Why you were sleeping? Because for a small pleasure, you thought this sleep is good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he looked and he stared at me. <coughs> I said, it's okay that you stare at me, but don't stare at that guy. He will not return you the money. <laughs> <laughs> Apply your wisdom now to get the money, even if it returns little less than what you have invested, it's okay, accept that and you get it. That should be the approach. That is what is explained by this Master Shwan in Idra Tathayucha. You have to sleep like a dog. moment your mind says this beer guy is, is going to give me a thousand dollar why why how is it worth taking it is it worth receiving it no don't sleep don't make your mind sleep keep it away with a little pleasure we get carried away every week I get two or three messages on my LinkedIn. I have a good presence there. It's all the fault of my team. You can make $20,000 if you follow my marketing approach. Thank you, sir. I'm not interested. Because you are not making $20,000 and you are promising me. That is why you are approaching me from nowhere. I am not at all connected to you. I don't believe it. Simple. I believe you as a human being, but I am not getting carried away by the emotional baggage. Shwan and Nidra I can give you one million examples. So when, by in a parabolic way, he says, I have not to sleep in a waking state. So sleeping in a waking state is emotional dependence. No emotional dependence with anyone in the world. <laughs> Why? I have to be a seeker. Why I have to be a seeker? To recognize love is God, God is love. Only when I am a seeker, then only I recognize. Otherwise, I found love in, uh, in, in the stock. I, I found the love in sexual pleasure. I found the love in all the 50 stuff. So my mind is already uh, enjoying claiming that false love is a real love. How can I find love is God? God is love. I have to become a seeker. If I'm not a seeker, forget about it.
It doesn't work. Look at the clarity. So, first, what is the idea of first? Kakachista bakudhyanam. They, they have written like a rhyme, so you can sing. Kakachista bakudhyanam shwaninidra tathaivacha. And now he comes to that what makes you a seeker. The fourth one, filter out. Filter out, what filter out? Filter out overeating. It puts you into unconsciousness. So they have created, Eastern wisdom has created a concept of miser diet. Modern science says, modern science says, balanced diet. A proportion of carbohydrate, protein, fat, minerals, vitamins, etc., etc. They say balanced diet. So we say it's okay. But over the, above the balanced diet, we should have a miser diet. Miser. Measurement. What is measurement? Beautiful concept. If you apply, your hours of sleep is going to be reduced. The quality of the sleep will increase. It takes five to six months on the line. I'm giving you a brief of it, measure diet. So measure diet means you divide the stomach, not physically, mentally, into four parts. You have to eat food, two parts, use two parts for the food, one part for the water, one part should remain empty. You will never feel sleepy after the food. Apply this in Christmas, otherwise normally in Christmas we overeat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> normally we overeat. No, 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 let us eat. Why should I overeat? Anyhow, at this moment, you are young, the digestive system may be able to digest the food, but you are overburdening the digestive system. You are burning the excretory system. You are creating a poison in the system. It takes time. It takes about, you know, it's a long principle, but I'm not going there. Four, four parts of the food, two parts for the food, one part for the water and one part for remain, should remain empty. Why it should remain empty? So that I can breathe deep, silent and slow. Lot of energy is used in digesting the food so I can recoup that energy. I should not feel tired. I should not feel sleepy. Eat whatever. Okay, whatever is good to eat in terms of the balanced diet, follow that, but two parts, two plus one plus one. But why? Go on asking the question why, because overeating makes my mind unconscious. We start acting out of our emotional baggage. There is another, also, I'm just explaining another part of this, uh, pa this, this discipline. Pushtam samudharam snigdham gavyam dhatu proportional mano vilashitam yogyam yogi bhojnama charote seeker eats the food that he cherishes, that he likes with, but it comes with a balance Formula of the balanced diet. I like one type of the food. 
it does not mean I should overeat. I should eat based on the quantity it is required. Can you believe that these principles were written 2,000 years ago when there was no science? Yeah, that's cool. cool. You're talking of the balance right now. We, these masters followed that. <coughs> Come to the fifth one. Filter the right thought with the wrong thought. Now, how to recognize it's a wrong thought? Simple way to recognize thought, wrong thought results into conflict, confusion. They are repetitive thoughts. You do not find any solution. That is the wrong thing. You stop everything. You restart. Reset. No, no, you don't believe. I have a lot of fear and anxiety. You know, it happened. This anxiety symptoms are there. Symptoms of the fear is there. Let us understand what is right thinking. Let me understand what is fear. So you restart what, why, where, when. But if I keep on thinking I have anxiety and these symptoms are there, with anxiety and these symptoms are there, there is no stopping of it. There is no end. So wrong thinking, to recognize what is wrong thinking, you start thinking about a person, you know, that guy cheated me, then you don't sleep. Yeah. yeah. He cheated you, he is sleeping. <laughs> he is enjoying his sleep. <laughs> but I don't think why he cheated me. Because I follow the principle third shwan and nidra tathaycha. I should have a sleep like a dog. I am not unconsciously. I'm not living my life unconsciously in my relationship. That unconscious living in unconscious relationship is amount to sleeping. It's an emotional baggage. I, baggage. I've already given you example of this guy who, who <laughs> invested. <laughs> no, he's my friend. I said, yes. Now he's your enemy. Isn't it? But you are scared, you are scared whether he will return the money or not. Filter out right thought with the wrong thought. So when you filter with the right and the wrong, how long it takes you to follow the right thought and the wrong thought? It takes, you are aware, you know these thoughts are causing me conflict and confusion and duality. Bye-bye. I'm not thinking about, not thinking about a person, not thinking about an object. <coughs> I told him that you should have invested where, right, in a right manner, where you know that, it should have given you, instead of 8%, it should have given you 4%. Mm -hmm. You don't have the strength to fight. He's a very soft kind. Even if he becomes angry, it says that he loves you. I said, what kind of a person you are? <laughs> you don't dare to challenge That is what the Shwan and Nidra Tathayi So we, when we sleep in a waking state means I'm living my life unconsciously. These things are bound to happen. Then we start blaming others. When you start blaming others, they don't accept their blame. So then you continue with the confusion and the duality. That is the wrong thinking. With these five qualities, I have not explained you, there are the highest level of a seeker who starts with the right thinking, the wrong thinking stops. 
no blame, no complaint, no reaction. Your mind becomes clear, you are happy again, highest level of a seeker. It takes few days to set on the right path, right thinking. You are an intermediate seeker and you are the lowest seeker. You don't find any suffering. Yes, you, you heard that I'm not worthy of suffering. I was sleeping and I did it unconsciously. You repent on, you start blaming yourself. Unnecessary. <laughs> You blame yourself, you forget after a few weeks and a month, after that you commit the same mistake again. <laughs> we, find, we, we find another guy who, who goes with, oh, $20,000 a month. Then you get carried away again. Oh, this guy looks different than the, that guy who also promised me, who cheated me, but this guy looks a little different than <laughs> I am unconsciously working. I have to take care of my mind. $20,000 or $15,000. So sometime I ask the, ask the question on the LinkedIn, what makes you contact me to give me this marketing secret ideas to earn $20,000? There are already millions of people on the LinkedIn. Would you find the one you can align with? I'm not aligned with you. I'm not interested in earning $20,000. I'm happy with what I Fifth one. How the entire understanding comes and what happens? You are listening and learning and doing the practice in the beginning. From the lowest level of a seeker, you are listening and learning, contemplating and reflecting. You become an intermediate seeker. You realize that yes, there is a difference in my life. And ultimately you reach to the highest level of a seeker and you want to know what happens. Okay, what happened? What has happened to me while listening and learning from the, uh, these principles of Eastern wisdom? So I've already explained you about the verse. There is another verse, Satasangatve Nesasangatvam. <coughs> Your mind is thinking with an emotional baggage. You are listening from the teacher how to drop that emotional baggage by listening to these principles. So satasangatve means you are listening and learning the teacher. So what happens? You get, uh, uh, you get, so no, 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 I'm not going there. I'm aware and alert. If someone comes and says, oh, invest and you, you, you talk for the sake of talking in a society. You respect. Oh, you ask a lot of questions. And then you say, okay, let me think and then I'll come back to you. You don't take a decision in a haste. Uh, just in this example. So you have clearly, your mind is clear. You have, your mind recognizes the emotional baggage part and mind recognizes the clarity. So it, it, it distances itself. So there is a segregation, there is a separation. That separation inside your head is known as dispassion. No, you don't get easily over $20,000, it's okay. Oh, yes, you're wonderful. You gave me a wonderful proposal, for example. So that, what happens by listening and learning? you get the power of dispassion in the mind. Now the mind is transforming. You continue listening, learning and doing the practice. You become the highest level of a seeker. You are still listening and then what happens? Satasangatve. Nesasangatve nirmohatvam. The word nirmohatvam means 
you easily recognize if the mind is moving, creating a delusion in a particular situation, in an event, in a relationship. Because you recognize the delusion, so you drop the delusion. You drop the delusion, you drop the wrong thinking. You drop the wrong thinking, you are already clear. You are relaxed and calm. Two things, listening and learning constantly. First, dispassion. Second result, freedom from the delusion. When the delusion is not there, the wrong thinking is not there, your mind is already steady. Mind is focused. Mind is clear. When? All the time. Where? In all locations. In which relationship? In all the relationship. You are not emotionally attached. You don't work through the attachment. The mind is already steady, it is clear, it, it always thinks rightly. So when we, our mind reaches to that sense of steadiness, only one session of meditation is required. <laughs> you are awakened. So it says listening and learning. Contemplation and reflection results into dispassion. Dispassion results into freedom from the delusion. Freedom from the delusion makes your mind rid of the wrong thinking. It gives you all the five resources that makes you a seeker and you are the highest level of a seeker. When the highest level of a seeker succeeds in meditation, meditation or mindfulness simply means the knowledge is revealed in you. What is that knowledge reveals in you? A revelation takes. But peace is my nature. Love is my nature. Love is God, so God is within me. Knowledge, so peace, happiness, love, wisdom. How they manifest through the consciousness. So that consciousness, <coughs> pure consciousness, is the God. That is love, that is knowledge, that is peace, that is happiness. Mind now never goes outside in search of peace, happiness, love. So what happens to those churches and the temples? You go to the church and temple. Now from love manifest from inside you goes to the image of the Jesus. You realize, you recognize, really love is God. You go to the temple, you see an image of a goddess or a god. Oh, Jesus, you are appearing in this form. I have recognized you. You see it vividly. When we say God is one, so God is always one. Oh, it has changed in, it has changed its name in the form in a temple. So you go to the Orthodox Church, the image of the Jesus is different. You go to the Quakers, it is different. You go to the Seventh day Adventist Church, it is different. You go to the Orthodox, it is different. So that awakening takes place inside you first. So love is always a God. <laughs>